Hello everyone and welcome to another devlog video for the procedural city generator. I know I've been quiet these past few weeks but I've been working on a lot of different features that are coming for the 1.2 update. One of the things I wanted to share with you guys today is an update to the world partition feature that I've been working on for PCG. Uh, I've been working on making it a lot easier and convenient uh, to use world partition which is an incredible feature in UE5 and it's the perfect feature to create mega cities, obviously. Uh, so in the previous video, I showed you guys how I am now generating a grid that spawns the city based on the world partition uh, cells that you can see here and how I'm making it easy to make basically uh, match the size of the cells. And then you have a little menu where you can kind of spawn the buildings according to the cells. And the idea would be that you could tackle generating parts of the city at a time you would finish it you would unload those cells and then you continue on and on and on in essence you wouldn't have to have the entire city loaded into memory at a time you could just load specific cells work on them and then unload them however i also mentioned that there were a lot of things that still needed to be figured out a lot of bugs mostly related with references you see if i go down here i'll show you uh, I have obviously just one single connecting row with several buildings here. If I select the road here, you'll notice that if I go to the details panel, the road itself has an array of buildings. Uh, it also has an array of fixed props, random props, foliage, etc. All of that information is needed, so when you select a specific road from the interface and you decide to remove buildings, for example, uh, it knows exactly which buildings are, are assigned to that road, the same thing goes for props, etc. Now the problem is that a lot of these hard references do not work when you're loading and unloading cells in World Partition. So that's one of the big things that I had to figure out how to rework, and I ended up creating soft references instead of hard references. So you can see that I have another array called Building List Soft. These are going to be soft references uh, and they're a little bit more complicated to use, not that much harder. Uh, but basically, instead of having a hard reference, a hard connection between the road and each building, I basically have a soft reference, which is almost like a little URL, a pointer. Uh, and those seem to work with world partition. Uh, I'm still kind of working through some of the kinks, but as you can see, most of this is already working. Once I nail down that final design, I'll do the same thing for the props and the foliage. I'll have soft references for those as well. But that is one of the challenges uh, that I had to kind of figure out why I was getting so many errors. Same thing for the buildings, right? If I select a building here, you can see that the building has um, a reference to the interior actor. Um, and the same thing, having a hard reference here, I had to switch to a soft reference and then only when you need the hard reference will I then load it from memory using this soft reference, use the reference, and then immediately clear it. Uh, that way it is still compatible with world partition. So there's a lot of work there that I had to do with references to make sure that things were working as expected. And I didn't want to completely remove that functionality because these references make it a lot more interactive and make it possible to use the UI the way that you guys have been using the UI and are expecting things to work. So I could have obviously nuked the whole thing and said I'm not going to have any references whatsoever, but I didn't want to go that route because that seems like I would be losing quite a bit just to use World Partition, and if in your case you don't need World Partition, then you would lose a bunch of functionality. Uh, something else that you noticed here is that I am using subfolders now instead of containers. In the original design, actually the one you have on your machine right now, you would see that we have an empty blueprint for buildings and then parented to that blueprint would be all of the building blueprints. And the same thing goes for roads and zones, etc. Well, apparently World Partition doesn't like it when you have blueprints that are parented to each other because it's trying to load and unload certain blueprints and it basically decides not to unload them. So I switched from parenting to a folder structure which is just a, a different way uh, of doing things. Uh, but again, very small changes that actually make things work appropriately with World Partition. With all this said though, the past few weeks, uh, specifically the last week, I was still going through a lot of crashes. Um, 
so many crashes actually that I started looking online and actually found that one of the crashes was related to references, even to soft references, the way I'm using them here. Even though theoretically it should work, in 5.0, the version of World Partition in 5.0 still has some bugs that were actually fixed in 5.1. So I decided to upgrade the project to 5.1 and my crashes went down by about 90%. I believe I only had one crash after testing for like three or four evenings, uh, which means that a lot of these issues were not really on my end, but more of, a, of bugs that were just still left over for World Partition. So I finally decided to make the switch to 5.1, um, which means that PCG 1.2, the actual update that is coming, will come out starting with version 5.1 and going forward. And I usually hate doing that. I like having a baseline version of Unreal. So for example, for Unreal Engine 4 is 4.22 and I supported everything from 4.22 to 4.27. I was really hoping to have 5.0 as the baseline, but unfortunately these are some pretty bad bugs and I would have to do significant work and reduce functionality here just to accommodate that version when 5.1 already has the bug fix. And I have a feeling that most of you are probably using 5.1 anyway because there's updates to World Partition, but there's also updates to Nanite, right? You can use Nanite Foliage in 5.1, you can use Mass Materials in 5.1. And even for my sidewalks, which I'm using geometry scripting, there are a bunch of new nodes that are coming in 5.1 that came already in 5.1. So I'll be severely limiting myself if I stayed in 5.0. I kind of make the decision to move to 5.1 and I would like to give you guys an opportunity. If you have any strong objections to me moving to 5.1, please let me know. Uh, I suspect not, but if there's any very real reasons why you absolutely do not want to go to 5.1, you need it for 5.0, please let me know. Uh, I'll love to hear the reasoning, and then maybe I'll see if I can do something with it. But otherwise, I will be moving for 5.1 just because it is a significant improvement on all of the tech that I'm using for PCG. So that is the update for War Partition. Um, well, actually, I guess I've just been talking a lot, but if I uh, press play here and I have the, um, the cells to be fairly small, um, this was just uh, spawned um, just before I, I press play on the video. You can see that pretty much everything is working as expected. You see those two buildings that are there. If I look on the World Partition chart, they're probably in between two cells. That's kind of the way World Partition works. It can't really decide which cell uh, to load and unload, so that kind of causes conflict. But by and large, you can see that your city now, if you, if you spawn the city with the changes that I've made, pretty much everything works as expected with World Partition. And now I just have to kind of fix up the, the grid system to work, but most of the bugs have now been uh, eradicated. And I'm gonna go to full screen here. And the second thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was destruction. Uh, as you can see here, I've, I've shown some um, screenshots on Discord, but basically I have now switched from Apex, which is obviously the UE4 NVIDIA solution, to Chaos. Uh, and this is a very, very simple setup. You can see, because I'm in 5.1, I can now use mass materials for the, uh, the windows, which means that I now I can actually see um, inside the buildings, right? And if I can, you can see there's a small bug there. Um, but if I go ahead and try to destroy this building, you can see that things get destroyed, and all of the um, all of the props inside each floor also simulate physics. And the reason for that is because you don't want this to happen, which is a small bug, like as you can see here. I guess this just disappeared. Well, you don't want the building to get destroyed, but then you want some of the props that are not simulating physics to kind of stay lingering in the air. Um, so all this is is a simple actor component that registers damage, and you can decide how much damage that is for the building. Once the building reaches a specific damage threshold, it is replaced by a geometry collection, which is then uh, destroyed. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that now. So if I select this building here, you can see that I just have a component called comp make destructible. 
and here you have things like the HP of the building, and this is just using the, the standard damage uh, system for Unreal Engine. You have a building geometry collection class, which has the geometry collection, and then you have some uh, settings here that will decide how strong will that destruction be. You're basically spawning a physics field on the hit location, which is then causing strain on the geometry collection, which is then basically breaking it. So you can directly uh, modify how strong will that kind of force will be. If you want to reduce this, then you'll, it'll it'll kind of crumble slowly. If you want like a huge explosion, you can make this quite strong. You can add a destruction sound, uh, and then you have options like destroy the debris and destroy the props. And I have that by default uh, after 10 seconds, which means that after you destroy the building, there's gonna be a 10 second counter, and after that, it will just completely uh, destroy itself. You won't have kind of debris holding over, and that's obviously for performance reasons. But if you wanted to make that a lot longer, or even remove that, you could leave the debris in your game basically perpetually, right? You could just have debris there as long as the player is um, basically playing the game. Um, so destruction is there. Uh, is It was uh, fairly simple to add, and I will give you guys obviously a full tutorial once uh, the one that two update comes out. But suffice to say, it is very simple. I kind of take care of all of the pain to kind of set this up. It took me about five minutes to set up one building. And if you guys have any custom buildings, it'll take you between five to 10 minutes to create it, destroy it, and then add the component and set it up. Very, very simple, which means that you can have a fully destructible city in just, uh, just a few minutes, hopefully. Uh, and the last thing I would like to show is um, the landscape layer. So right now, if I click on one of the buildings and I go down to the, la the landscape section, you see that we have some landscape layers right here. And these correspond to the layers that are part of my standard landscape material. You can see that we have a procedural layer, foliage removal, etc. And up until 426, I believe, Unreal Engine 4 did not allow us to create variables for landscape layer objects, which means that it was a huge pain to try to change these layers. So now that I'm uh, obviously working on Unreal Engine 5 and this is possible, now I've simplified the entire process to a data table that you can see here where you can add or remove as many layers uh, as you want based on the um, material that you're using and this information will then get passed along to every single building and every single road so i'm going to load here everything if you can see here um, and no longer will you have to open a specific uh, blueprint and change these layers uh, um, inside the code but you can actually now manually select them and change them as well and of course you have the actual layer list here and then you can specify the index here so in this case by default this building is going to use layer index 3 which will be asphalt as you can see here layer for asphalt um, so a lot more flexibility in that case and a lot more convenience um, so yeah that is the update that i have for you guys today uh, i will continue working on world partition i think now that most of the bugs are gone I'm gonna focus on finishing up this tab here that says World Partition with some additional settings and having that grid, the spawn grid, uh, be a little bit more permanent and nicer to use. And then you'll be able to spawn your city based on the World Partition grid in a much easier way. Destruction is there, landscape layers are there. I'm gonna continue working on the sidewalks and a few other things that are part of the one that to update. So stay tuned for another uh, devlog soon where I'll show you guys some of the other features that I've been working on. Thank you guys so much for your patience and support. Do let me know if you have any strong opinions about my decision to move to 5.1. And yeah, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll talk to you in the next video.